We are back here for our final video of this project, the Pebble Shore. And we're going to see how we can add the, the vegetation in the same way, a nice touch of water in this project. We're going to use this, a similar technique that we use for scattering the rocks for now place our vegetation. And we're going to use the ocean too to create our body of water. So that's the last video of this series, so let's do it. Picking up where we stopped last video, uh, so we had the rocks, we have the ground, now it's time to put the vegetation. So let's create here a geo node. It's gonna be our grass. And just like we did before, I'm gonna put a merge object and merge it here the ground, right? And we can turn off for now the rocks and the ground. Put a uh, paint attribute, and the attribute you're going to paint here is going to be your, our grass. Right. Go to the viewport, press enter, and then we can activate. And we can just go around and paint this wherever you want. And I'm going to set the value here, some part 0.5, and later we're going to use this to drive the size of, a, of our file that we're going to, to instance in. Let me smooth here a little bit, just create a, a softer transition between those values. Nice. And we can use a scatter node. Looking for the grass attribute and use a density scale to adjust the, the amount. So just to have an idea uh, what density of the scale we need to use, let's bring you here the, the file, the Olympic, uh, And that gives us idea of the size and the, how much is the group of the grasses. So it's not that we need a whole lot of points, so like a high density here. We're not talking about uh, individual blades of grass for this particular project. So the best way to see this is put a, a cop node here. And they're a little bit big. 0.5. Maybe you need less than that. That should be good. And we want to create a variation of uh, the rotation as well. You now our eyes are very good to pick, but they all face in the same direction. That's a skill that we all have to see those patterns there. Um, so we're going to create an attribute just like we did the last time and that's going to be raw. How we know how to name this, well we saw this in an other video, but uh, Houdini has the, the attributes for copying instance. So those are the ones that it automatically recognizes and see for rotation it is called raw and is a float of four. So put it aside. It's a rod and it's a float and make a size of four. Uh, so default is zero, so nothing happens because we want to randomize. So randomize this attribute. Let it be here, rod. And Four. So we don't want them to randomize any other direction than just the Y axis is rotating this way. So in this case, we can put a minus 180, 180, so that will give a variance, uh, a total of 100, uh, 360. 
for a direction there. Very good. Uh, so we do want to, to create the scale variance here. So for this, actually, you know what? What we can do, it's, uh, we call that grass, right? But uh, let me put a wrangle here. We could use an attribute rename, but maybe we have a more uh, control of this. So let's call this a P scale. So we know the same way. The P scale is uniform scale, is a float. So let's say that our our float p scale is going to be equal our what do we call grass, right? And see, right away we have a, a difference of scales, exactly how you paint. It. And what we can do here, since we can like choose more, of course I could go back and repaint that way, but uh, we can just multiply this by a, a channel. So we call also this channel probably right. if we click here. And just click, click here to create that scale and to multiply everything for zero. Uh, so one doesn't help much. 1.3, right? 1.5. Nice. So we're good here with our grass distribution where we create, but of course we want to create um, the material for it. So let's create here our network. Grass mat network. And we again are gonna use our material style shape. So principal sh uh, shader and call it as a grass material. So before we would do anything, let's try something different. On our rock uh, tutorial, when you create the pebbles, we, we create different uh, materials, right? And we just use the style sheet to uh, switch between them. But let's say we want to use the same material, but we want just to change an attribute. So let's see how it's gonna work. Let me jump back here. And one thing we want to do, make sure stamp. So also we, we save some memory there. And we create another random attribute. And let's say that we create a, a, an attribute, it's gonna be a vector. And I will call this color. Maybe later we change the name of this for something more meaningful, but I want to make it very clear as we appoint here. And this is gonna be a vector, so we put a set, and we randomize the all of PT num, right? So this will give you a, a number zero to one, and we just random, I mean, we randomize again those numbers. It's something different here. So that will give us very random colors. And those 580, it just uh, numbers make different, otherwise there would be a grayscale. Hmm. Nice. And so save. And as we go here, we have the color, so vector coming out here. So let's jump back to our data tree and we have a material style sheet right now we're going to create on the grass and let's create a style and in this style we're going to create add a style here and 
add a target in the primitive. But what we want is a add override script. And instead of being setting material, we're doing a material parameter. So we change that. So let's see how it's going to work. So first we come here and an object, the grass, and you get a grass material. And the surface, let's put it on a base color. All right. And let's change actually the base color so that we are control the color of the object. And from here we want to use an attribute binding because we're getting attribute that we created we call color. Right? So let's render that and see how it looks. It doesn't look right. And the reason is they don't have the material assigned. Okay, now we've got what we want. It's pretty neat, right? And you can use this for so many other things. Not only color, but reflections and uh, and pretty much all attributes we want to create. Well, I'd say unless you create a wandering land with uh, all this colorful grass, uh, we're not done. Although it looks pretty cool. Uh, so let's go back here and we're going to apply a texture on. Uh, get it here. So remember that when you connect one uh, texture map here, this attribute works as a multiplier. So you multiply those values there. So that's that's why we see we still see the, the tint of the of the colors on the grass. So what we can do with this if we go back here on the random the attribute. And if we would, would just make them a grayscale, you all are gonna see is the same color just going darker and lighter. There, so you can see, you know, that is light on top, so it can easily mislead us, but you can see this is darker than this, and so on. And you could fit this in the range, uh, so you decide how much of the lighter or dark you want. So let's say you fit, this is zero, 01, again this value, and now what we want this to be 0.5 as a minimum and 1. So everything will be a more or more on a brighter side. Maybe the red, uh, red was on the brighter side anyway. So you have the control over that. So this creates a variance of, uh, of our grass there. Nice. So we're done with the grass. So the next step now is to create the... Let's turn on the ground to see all together. So it's it. It's getting there. It's looking pretty good. And now all we need is our body of water over here to complete our scene. So we are almost there. And this last step is actually very easy. 
and I'm not going to make anything anything fancy. I'm just going to use the, the tools that Houdin provides you. And uh, if you go up here, we're going to have the ocean tool. And I have our small ocean. It's going to create the, the geometry there for you. It's going to create your ocean uh, nodes for you. So that's come from free. And I have your render here. And you, you may want to adjust uh, value here to adjust the, the size of the waves and the wind and the scale the way you want. So it you know blends better for a lake. And we, we can cache this this information because you're gonna generate the the displacement. So if you go to our output, right, you see this fetch that data of the spectrum there for, for rendering. So there is no whole a lot out there. It's it's something that Houdini give you easy for free, and I take it. I take it, and you can adjust the way you want. So let's see our final result. I hope you had enjoyed those video series, and let me know. Please give your comments down below, and when any thoughts and ideas for the more tutorials. And uh, thanks very much for watching. And uh, see you soon.